There is no denying that old age does bring with it a number of challenges, not the least of which is either the fear of or the reality of dementia. And when you realise that every four seconds, somewhere in the world, another person is diagnosed with a disease, you start to get the scale of the situation that is facing us in the coming years. Should we all stop drinking, start taking exercise, eat only a Mediterranean diet? Well, that's the $64,000 question, isn't it? And it is indeed the reason why we are all here today. The World Alzheimer Report, collating and proposing a whole raft of existing research studies to demonstrate that the risk of developing dementia may be reduced by developing and following healthier lifestyles. Why is risk reduction so important in dementia? Uh, and I think this slide tells it all. Here we see the numbers of people with dementia estimated for 2015, 47 and a half million people worldwide. Um, you can see, looking particularly at Asia there, how actually uh, nearly two-thirds of all people with dementia actually live in lower middle-income countries, not in high-income countries. Um, but look at the axis on the top as we scroll through the timeline over the next 35 years through to 2050. Look at those numbers shooting up there in Asia, uh, in Africa. So let's get to the key findings. And the areas that we looked at um, were developmental and early life factors. Uh, then we looked at psychological factors, uh, depression and anxiety, um, lifestyle factors, which are behaviours that individuals choose to a greater or lesser extent to adopt. Then cardiovascular risk factors, where we mainly focused on um, hypertension, that's raised blood pressure, uh, obesity, cholesterol, and diabetes. So what, having looked through all of those risk factors, did we finally drill down to as being the really robust findings? Education, which operates in early life, is very consistently associated with a strong protective effect. The higher educational level, the lower your risk for dementia, um, and other evidence suggests that this is probably around cognitive and brain reserve. With high blood pressure, there's very strong evidence that raised blood pressure in midlife is associated with a considerable increased risk for dementia uh, in late life. And this is a very um, potentially preventable risk factor. Diabetes and smoking, however, the interesting thing here is that it operates across the life course from midlife to late life. So this is our message, it's never too late. This is a global effort. The incidence of dementia is concentrated in lower middle income countries. We're already beginning to do good work, but we need to do much more in high income countries. But there is a whole set of work and public health and governmental activity that needs to be done to address this problem in lower middle income countries. If you look at this uh, slide, this is the predicted increase of dementia worldwide up to 2050. Hopefully we can bend this curve and even if it's not 135 million but 134 million, I would already be happy for the 1 million people who don't get the disease. Um, the other takeaway I think from this report is that there is a a huge link with the other chronic diseases uh, and that we have a public health message and that's an area where dementia has not been so active yet. So hopefully this can be the start of uh, getting more involved in that area. I think the, the second key message for me was really around the importance of prevention and promoting healthy lifestyles and the fact that we know that um, reducing dementia risk um, is impacted upon by promoting healthy lifestyles. But I think also we need to be very cognizant of the fact that lifestyles are very much embedded within our broader environments. And I think we've got to be quite careful in terms of the way that we're talking about lifestyles and how um, personal choice is enwrapped within that. Because I think arguably you could say that a man in Kathmandu who doesn't do enough um, physical activity, is it his actual choice or is it actually his broader environment? People see, uh, the media see dementia as the preserve of old age. This is a life course issue. And so, I mean, I, when I've spoken to audiences uh, recently, I, I, I will say to them that somebody who, who dies with dementia aged 80 and was diagnosed aged 70 was probably having the dementia pathology in their brain in their mid-40s. I think for me, one of the reasons why this is a groundbreaking report is that it has a key public health message, and that ingredient is hope. 
And I think that's really potent because I think there's nothing, you know, my grandmother had dementia. And one of the things that's kind of struck me over the years is, is that my fate? You know, it's a thought that comes back into your head. And I think this report actually gives us something which makes us realise that there is a chance that we can improve our own health. You know, ageing is a gift that we actually have, you know, but the way in which you can age well is whether or not you have your health. So I think for governments that are facing ageing, I'd see that as a huge opportunity for them to be more economically productive, have people in the labour supply much la later in life, you know, to really live healthier, happier, longer lives. <laughs> I am just going to um, end up by, by quoting something that, uh, that, that, uh, that Martin actually says towards the end of his report and his conclusions, and it's this, if we can all enter old age with better developed, healthier brains, we are likely to live longer, happier and more independent lives with a much reduced chance of developing dementia, with an estimated global societal economic cost of dementia of over $600 billion and rising, the stakes could hardly be higher. So I think your report, Martin, comes at a very appropriate moment. Thank you.